Hey, welcome to the Octoparse onboarding video. Octoparse will allow you to scrape any website and find emails, phone numbers, contact information, whatever you need to add to your lead list. In this video, there are four parts that we're gonna cover. The Octoparse interface, the key features, the template tasks, and the custom tasks. Let's start by looking at the homepage here. You can see the URL input bar right at the top. There's also popular templates, a beginner checklist, and some helpful tutorials down here. There's also the help button if you need help. Then you got this sidebar. This new button lets you edit custom tasks or template tasks. You can import tasks in here, and you can even organize tasks into a new task group if you want to do that. Then there's the task list, which helps you manage all of your scraping tasks. In here, you can edit the tasks. You can see everything that's going on, and you can organize them, delete them, rename them, and you can also run, stop, or schedule the tasks here. Let's say you want to schedule a scraping task to recur. All you have to do is go over to the task list, and here, where it says not set, on next run, you can click to set a schedule either in the cloud or local. The cloud is on top and local is on the bottom. Let's do a cloud task and set it to recur every week on Saturday at 11 a.m. Then you want to name it Saturday at 11, hit save and schedule on. Now this task will automatically run again every Saturday at 11 a.m. and give you the data. Then this help button gives you access to a bunch of tutorials, our entire help center, which is full of a bunch of articles that will teach you everything you need to know about Octopars. But if you have further questions, then just click this chat button and send us a message anytime. We'll be happy to help. You can give feedback, you can get tips, or just grab a basic walkthrough of Octoparse. In Octoparse, everything starts with creating a task. A task is often called a bot, an agent, or a crawler. No matter what it's called, it's basically just telling the computer what to do. Typically, one task scrapes one website. So if you have one website, you put it in, create a task, you teach Octoparse how to look at that website and break it down. Then if you have a different layout, then you would use a second task for that. And if that sounds too complicated, well, we've got easy to use templates right here in template tasks. So whether you wanna scrape Glassdoor or Google Jobs or Google Local, whatever you have for lead generation, for social media, for real estate, there are a ton of templates here. And that way you don't have to train a bunch of bots. Before you get going on a scraping task, always check to see if there's a template ready because these are tested, they're ready to go versus trying to build your own every single time. For this template, we're gonna to go to search and search Google Maps listing scraper by keywords. Inside, you can see all the information that a template could pull. This one's gonna pull the keyword, the name, the rating, price rating, all this sort of stuff. You can also see a description of the data here. In the templates gallery, you can see related templates, related apps. You'll see the saved tasks that use this template and a ton of other information. Then you can either start the task now or save it for later in your task list. So let's hit start and we'll select our language and our region. Then you just put in the keyword it's gonna search on Google Maps, Starbucks near 95136 and hit start. Then you're gonna be presented with two options. Do you wanna run it on your device or in the cloud? Cloud extraction lets you run all the data scraping on Octoparse's servers, which run 24 seven. Computers are faster than your computer. You don't have to use your computer for scraping. You can use it for other stuff, maybe watching YouTube, whatever you wanna do. And Octoparse will be over there doing all the work for you in the cloud. That allows you to schedule tasks at any frequency also. So if you want repeating tasks, or if you want tasks to happen at midnight your time, and you don't wanna to have to wake up with an alarm, that that's what this is perfect for. And all the data is stored securely in the cloud, so you can look at it anytime from any device. For this one, we're gonna run it on our device. So hit standard mode. Now the task has started and the data is running. Here you can see the task overview, which shows the start time, the end time, the extracted data, capture attempts, failed URLs, and any automation. There's also the data list where you can see the data pouring in by the second here, and the event log, which shows exactly what's going on during the run. And you can even see recent runs, which shows you the history. If you've paused, if you've stopped, it'll all show here. You can also show browser, and you can show all of this being collected. Once all the data has been extracted, you can hit export, and you can export data as Excel, CSV, HTML, a whole bunch of different things, including Google Sheets, and you can even put it straight to storage in Google Drive, Dropbox, or Amazon S3. So let's hit confirm, save the data here, and you can see all the data in Excel ready to go. Now let's do a custom task. Octoparse comes with a handy auto detect feature, which automatically scans the website and builds the scraper for you. So we'll go on over to new custom task. Here we'll input this URL, we'll use eBay. Now it will auto detect the web page data for you and start building a scraper. If for some reason you didn't want this, then you can go down to settings, custom tasks, and unclick this one, auto detect web page upon completion of a new custom task. You can see the AI is now 
identifying everything on the site that could be worth scraping. It's looking for infinite scroll. It's trying to find every piece of this website to pull the best data for us. Most websites have similar layouts like this nested list. So you can see how auto detect would be better for this nested layout structure. Down here, you can see the data preview. So we're getting title, we're getting price here. If we don't like this, we can switch auto detect results and find a different set of data. There's two settings up here. There's paginate to scrape more pages. And this allows you to find the button that would go page one, page two, page three, et cetera here. So this button is correct, which we found by hitting check. If not, we would edit it and we could click a different button and confirm that that's the right button to go to the next page. But in this case, it is correct. Then if it's an auto scrolling page, you would add page scrolls if it's paginated, then there's no need for that. And then we will create a workflow. A workflow lists the exact steps that the scraper is gonna take to get the data for you. For instance, it'll go to the web page first, then it will look at the pagination. It'll look at the first page, extract the data from that page, click to paginate to go to the next page, then it will loop through again. And you can edit this by clicking the three dots here, but I would be careful. Let's say we wanted to delete pagination. We wouldn't just click the three dots and hit delete because this would also delete all of the nested tasks. So instead, we wanna drag loop item out of this list and then we can delete pagination. But for now, we actually need pagination, so I'm gonna keep it here. Then you wanna select a subpage URL and hit confirm. This is in case you want more data from the subpages. For this one, you can either auto detect or not. For the subpages, I don't like to do the auto detection, so let's cancel that. Instead, we're gonna click the elements that we wanna scrape. For example, the product title, and we'll extract the text data here. Now, if you wanna extract the URL of every page, you would go to add custom field, page level data, and page URL. You can also change the names of these. So instead of text, I want this to be called item name. And instead of page URL, I want it to be called item URL. Now let's say you accidentally add a data field, like we don't want the pricing here. Well, luckily we can just click these three dots and delete the field. Let's go ahead and hit run. And this time we're gonna run it in the cloud. This will assign a random IP and Octoparse's servers are gonna do all the scraping for you. This means you don't have to keep your computer open and you can instead let Octoparse do all the work. It's also much faster than running it locally. So let's hit standard mode. And now the data is being extracted. In Cloud Run, you'll see everything, task overview, data list, recent runs. The only difference in this one is the subtask status. And if you click details, here you can see the event log and a screenshot. Now we can see our average speed, we're pulling 11 lines a minute and we've pulled 35 pieces of data, which we can see in our data list here. Here are all the titles that we pulled, the prices. And then if you scroll over to the right, you can see the item name and the item URL from our subtask. When you're happy with the amount of data that's extracted, you can hit stop and confirm. It will also auto stop when it runs out of data. And then you can export this data right here. So let's export it to Excel and we'll save it to our desktop. When it's done, you can open the file and view all your data right here. And that's Octoparse. Use it to your heart's content, scrape a bunch of data. And if you need help, use this button here to contact the help center. All right, happy scraping. <laughs>